Hello everyone, welcome to another Archie Junkie video. Um, this is a continuation video of the new Beer RC SM4 4-way switching unit. In my previous video I covered how I've actually wired up my little test rig here. And in this video I'm just going to very quickly go through how to enter into, let me just excuse me, how to enter into programming mode and how to get into potentiometer mode. And this will become more apparent as we go through each of the modes and I will cover the differences in the modes in each of the videos. So, first of all, this is the little unit here. We have four outputs, and this is my test rig. So, say you can, I'll put a link to the video of how to wire up the test rig. So, this is the test rig here, and this is the page in the manual, which I believe is page seven. The first few pages are how to wire and just the legal requirements and the contents of the manual. So, this is how to enter into programming mode. Reading through here, it can be quite confusing when it refers to A and D modes, up or left or down or right. And basically, that refers to whether you have, you're have you using a left-right stick or you're using an up-down stick. So as it will be, I'm actually using a left-right. So here's my left, which is A, and my right, which is D. But you may be an up, so it may be up is A and D is down, or in reverse, if that's the channel you connect the unit to, and that channel has been reversed in your controller. So that is how we use this stick to get into programming mode and by powering the unit on and off. And I'll very quickly go through that and I'll show you how that operates. And then once you have that, you then refer to this, which is the mode chart. These are the 15 modes and this is the color sequence you need from the LEDs to get into the various modes, depending on which mode you wish to use. So, as an example, this is my test rig. I have my colors set up here. So that I have the unit set up so that the LEDs correspond in the same sequence as they do on the actual mode chart. Now they actually run through as number one is here and it's green on here. So this is done this way to refer to this. But at the bottom, one is here, two is here, three is here, and four is here. Now this will become more apparent in the mode section, as with this is more apparent in the programming section. So the manual basically states that you need to power on your transmitter, power on your receiver, and then plug the unit in. Upon plugging the unit in, you then within, as it's here, within five seconds, move the transmitter three times into zone A, or left, or right, or up or down, and then three times into D. So say it sounds confusing, but I'll show you, and it actually is very simple. Once you're into that mode, you can then get into this part. And then from there, I'll also show you how to get into potentiometer settings. And the potentiometer settings sounds strange, but there's basically this here. So mode 7, 10, 12, and 14 have different options you can use. A, an example, sensitivity, milliseconds, flashes and milliseconds and these are the potentiometer readings and again this refers to the sequence on my LED so that will become more apparent. So the manual basically states that you should have your transmitter powered which we are to just move my stick otherwise we'll get beeping. So my receiver is powered because it's powered off of this and my power supply is on and what we do is I remove the plug I actually have found that my breadboard allows me to turn the unit on and off by the power switch without having to keep unplugging and plugging the connector. But certainly in your model, this is the procedure that Beer suggests you do. So we have our receiver on, the unit's powered, receiver is powered, transmitter is on, ready to go. And again, I'm using A and D on my transmitter here. So we simply plug that in. We go one, two, three, one, two, three. That is it. And you can see here, that's now confirmed that we're into programming mode. And we're actually currently flashing one green. So if we refer to the chart, one green flashing LED, excuse the glare from my light here, one green flashing LED says we're in mode one. Now it will stay in here until for 30 seconds or until you power the unit off. So I have a plus written on here and a negative written on here. Now if I hit plus, which is left, you can see we've now gone into mode two, which is red flashing. Okay, so I'll leave this on the side of the screen and you can see 
the LEDs as they go through. Now I've put in the corresponding LED to the corresponding color to try and help you. But ignore the sequence of LEDs here. It's the sequence on the unit that you're referring to here. So if I hit plus again, you can see we now have, let me just say, ignore those there. On this unit here, we have red and green. So we have red and green flashing. If I hit plus, we should go to blue flashing. And as you see, we're working down here. So we should now have blue and green flashing. Again, refer to these lights up here. And then we have red and blue flashing here. So we should have green, red and blue flashing. We now have yellow. We're basically going through it. And then if you want to go back, you just hit minus. So we go back back, 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 back. So we're now back to number one, which is number one, green flashing. So I'm going to leave it at number one, because number one is the first mode on the chart that I'm going to cover in the next video. So whilst you're in that mode, you can just leave it, leave it 30 seconds and the unit will go back into programming, out of programming mode. Or you can simply just power the unit off by putting it out of the receiver. Now I'm going to plug mine back in. I plug it back in and the unit has done nothing. It's literally just there ready to go. Now mode one allows for one output one to come on with a left stick, output right to come on, sorry, output four to come on with a right stick. If you hold left we get number two, if we hold right we get number three. So I just turn those off. So that's a very quick how to get into the actual programming mode and how to get out of it. Now, now what I will cover is how to get into the potentiometer settings. So these are the potentiometer settings. So they only refer to modes 7, 10, 12 and 14. So what we probably need to do is get our unit into mode 7 at least so we can see how that would function because you cannot enter the potentiometer mode for other modes only these modes that are on this one here so what we will do is we will refer to this and we will get it into number seven here which is pulse when moving which is going to be our red sorry blue red and green flashing and then we will switch into potentiometer mode so to switch into potentiometer mode once we're into programming mode as it says here these are the various settings there are no settings for the other areas that do not have potentiometer settings so no settings for the other modes other than these and here it says once you're into programming mode and the lights leds are activated according to your set mode so again they'll be according to mode 7 we're going to set it to controller must be moved into area D for at least two seconds which is this is where this is becomes important you need to remember if your D is right up or down depending on where you are so we're going to move it into the D area for at least two seconds and then this will activate excuse me this will activate the digital potentiometer mode and then we can go through and apply this to the settings now here so in seven mode seven we have zero to seven is the sensitivity now this doesn't explain much here. Um, I will give some feedback to be able to say that if you a mode has potential with settings to include this as part of the mode area of the page of the manual. Because you basically need to know this sequence of lights, this sequence of numbers, to the sequence of mode, and that mode is depending on which sorry, this potential with settings depending on which mode you're in. So what we do is we get into programming, we get into this, we switch it to number seven, we switch into potentiometer. And then I'll quickly very finely quick quickly find mode seven and we'll see how it corresponds. So as I said, the way to do it is to pull the plug, but I've actually figured out on mine. I can just power the unit off for a second. On one, two, three, one, two, three. This puts me into programming mode. So we're in mode one, which is mode one here, which is one green flash. Just shade the light. And we need to get into seven. So we know that if I move to the left, I go up to plus. So I should just be able to go from mode one to two, three, four, five, six, seven. And to confirm, seven, pulse when moving, should be green, red, and blue flashing. 
which are these ones here, green, red and blue flashing. So we now went over in mode seven. So as it says in this mode, you hold it in D for two seconds. We're now into the potentiometer mode, which are these lights here. And again, we're referring to these lights here. So currently we are yellow lit. Excuse me, it's gone out of programming mode whilst me talking. But we had yellow lit and green flashing, which means we're in mode one. So let me just very quickly find mode seven in the manual. Obviously there's a shorter window for mode seven, sorry, for the um, potentiometer mode. Then there is elsewhere. So, again, I'm just gonna get this back into programming mode. One, two, three, one, two, three. That puts us into programming. We're now in over in mode seven, so it has remembered those settings. So we checked that mode seven was uh, green, red, and blue flashing, which are these ones here. So we need to go into D, Just two seconds. And now in yellow and red. So we have yellow lit, ignore this. So we have yellow lit and red flashing. So we have yellow lit, red flashing. Let me just change the mode before it times out. So yellow lit, red flashing, we're in number three. I don't know if you can see that here. Yellow lit, red flashing, sorry, is number two. Yellow lit, red flashing. So if I hit plus, we now go up. So we now have yellow lit, red and green flashing. So yellow lit, red and green, so we're now in three. We're now in four, yellow lit, blue flashing. Five, six, seven. So seven should be yellow lit, and then blue, red and green flashing. So here, yellow lit, blue, red and green flashing. So say, remember these lights we're referring to. These are the programming sequence lights. So I shall go back to the set it on minus, 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 minus. And that's the default we had it on, which was yellow, red flashing. So yellow, red flashing is number two. So once we're in that mode, we can allow it to time out like we had done, or we can literally just power unit off, power the unit on, and it's remembered that setting. So we're now in mode seven. Mode seven, as you can see, gives us various different lights effects completely, but we'll go through those in separate videos. So that is how to get into programming mode and how to get into potential to programming mode. I would include this link into the other mode video so you can go back and figure out how to get into here. So I won't cover how to get into that mode of each video. Well, certainly I may just very quickly go through it, as in I may not explain the process. You'll see me literally just go on, move the unit, check the corresponding mode lights to the mode we were talking about, and then see how those LEDs work for that mode. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you find it informative and helpful. Please like and subscribe and catch the next 15 potential videos.